Today we're going to talk about genetic linkage and genetic crossing over and how those things lead to diverse populations. So the first thing you need to know is that the, whenever you see an X on this video, it re represents the whole chromosome. The blue and the purple both represent an entire chromosome. Remember that all chromosomes have genes on them. Those little colorful things on the picture are genes. Next we need to talk about homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes are chromosomes that line up like this during meiosis. They line up right next to each other during meiosis, and sometimes, if you look at closely at those colors in the middle right there, they switch. You can see that the blue kind of went on the purple, and the purple kind of went on the blue. Watch it again real closely, and then they start to move apart from each other back, and it's called crossing over. So the blue crosses over onto the purple, and the purple crosses over onto the blue. And this is how you get so many different kinds of species in the world and so many different variations within species because you have an exchange of chromosomes between homologous chromosomes during meiosis. So imagine that these two cells are, div are dividing during meiosis. One goes this way, one goes the other way. And sometimes during this process, the homologous chromosomes switch. Another time where we see interesting things between genes is when genes are close together, like this red gene and orange gene, or like this green gene and yellow gene. These genes are all close together. This is known as genetic linkage. Genetic linkage is when genes are close, are close together and they're more likely to be inherited together if they're located close to each other. For instance, if you look at this chromosome here, you can see that the red gene is far away from the orange gene. This means that these two genes are probably not genetically linked because they're far away from each other. However, if you draw another gene like this purple gene here, you can see that this black gene and this other gene here, this blue gene, they're close together, so they would be, yes, they would be genetically linked because they are close together. In order to show me that you really understand this stuff, however, on the test, you're going to have to do a constructed response question. In this case, the question is explain how often dominant and recessive genes alongside genetic crossing and genetic linkage help lead to diverse populations. Make sure to give two reasons for your answers, number one and number two. One important thing to remember is that the word diverse means different. The next thing you need to make sure you do is you really talk about the word dominant and recessive and also genetic crossing and genetic linkage when you're giving your answer. One important thing to talk about when talking about dominant and recessive genes is to remember that dominant and recessive genes can lead to over 8 million different kinds of people on the earth. Because there are different kinds of genes on each chromosome, there are many millions of different ways humans can come out each and every day. The other important thing is to remember the importance of genetic crossing. Genetic crossing, like we said before, is when you cross X's and sometimes those homologous chromosomes get crossed over and make new things. And this leads to almost 23 million different kinds of things you can make because with the 46 different chromosomes, there are millions and millions of different ways you could cross them and change them. This is so important and these two reasons will help you get a good score on your constructed response for your test.